You know, these brands, they are really just crinkling my taint, really bunching up the old grundle. Especially this time of year when we're starting to see all the holiday releases. Now listen, this video is going to be lighthearted, but it's also going to have its fair dose of shade because that's... That's what I do, you know this. This video is actually inspired by Charlotte Holdcroft and Mel Thompson, two of my YouTube friends in my head. I believe Charlotte started this tag. I don't even know if she intended it to be a tag, but she did a video called Things Brands Do That Drive Me Nuts. Not too long after that, Mel did her own version, and now here I am, your girl T, chiming in with yet another unsolicited opinion. Plus, this is the first day in about six months that there hasn't been constant construction noise from jackhammers and God knows what else going on next door, so I feel like I have to film. And as long as I'm dilly-dallying before actually getting into this video, let me do one more shout out, and that is to Keisha. You know who you are. Imagine my surprise when a Sephora friends and family 20% off coupon popped up in my email inbox completely unannounced. I didn't know it was coming, but I was very happy that it did come because I finally took the y'all. I did it. I bought a Mothership palette. That's right, I got the Mothership 3 after two years of coveting this thing. And obviously I'm wearing it on my eyes right now. Definitely pretty chuffed with how my look turned out. Here's a closer look at my eye shadow with my new Pat McGrath palette. Thank you, Keisha. And that coupon was actually right on time because I was going to pick this palette up directly from Pat McGrath during her 20% off sale that just passed, but it was out of stock. And I have a hunch that this palette is being discontinued, to be honest. So it was really a pleasant surprise to be able to get that same discount and still get the palette as a little present to myself to celebrate hitting 100K. So Keisha, if you're out there and you're watching, Thank you so much, I appreciate you. Okay, let's get out of plug town and get into the actual content of this video and talk about the things that these brands do that really get me clenching my sphincter. The first thing that brands do that I really hate is uh, treating us like we're fucking stupid. This manifests in a lot of different ways, but it usually comes down to really obviously shady and not true marketing tactics. One recent example that springs to mind is the announcement of the holiday palette from Charlotte Tilbury. Now a lot of you guys know I love me some Charlotte Tilbury. I don't think there is a day where if I'm doing my makeup that I don't use at least a Tilbury product. Now when this palette launched, because I am on her mailing list because I make poor choices, there was an email stating that this new palette, I don't even remember what it's called, was only going to be available for 24 hours and you better hurry up because her last palette sold out. 24 hours? Really? Really, Char? While the email didn't state outright that it was never going to be back again after those 24 hours, it strongly insinuated that this might be your only chance to get this palette because once it sells out in this 24 hours, it's gone forever. That was the insinuation. Because I'm slightly less dumb compared to how I look, I knew right away, that that was bullshit. Anyone with a brain in her head knows good and goddamn well that palette's going to be at Sephora and Beautylish and anywhere else that carries Charlotte Tilbury. It's not unusual for brands to make something exclusive on their site first and then it rolls out eventually to the other retailers that carry that brand. I just really, really resented the implication that this 24 hours was going to be the only opportunity to get the palette. Just that panic, that insecurity marketing that I talked about in a video I did not too long Long ago. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen brands do in terms of making it very clear that they think we're stupid, but it's up there. And that actually segues perfectly into the next thing that brands do that I hate, which is lying, just just lying to us. One of the most pervasive examples of this is Sephora, which frequently likes to indicate that things on their site are exclusives. Prime example, my Pat McGrath palette. How are you going to pretend that this is an exclusive to your site when I can get it from, oh, I don't know, Pat McGrath? Granted, it is out of stock right now, but it was there first, meaning it was never exclusive to Sephora. More to the point, it's still in stock other places as well, like such as Bergdorf Goodman, which carries Pat McGrath, and I'm pretty sure Selfridges as well in the UK. Sephora will evidently do anything for clout, including lie about things being exclusive, where even the most cursory Google search 
which will prove that often that is not the case. Other lies I hate are when brands lie about things being limited edition when we know from the jump that they never intend for something to be limited edition. When brands lie about something being a new shade or a new formulation, anything along those lines. A good example would be in the Hourglass Christmas blush palette where they lied about three of the shades being new when only two of them are new. Oh, and one of the greatest lies that really, really grinds my gears is the flash shipping at Sephora. That has got to be the greatest scam ever. Because this flash two-day shipping used to be included as part of your benefits package for being rouge. And I've been rouge for a few years now, I don't wanna talk about it. And I don't think I have ever, and I mean ever received anything in two days from Sephora. I believe this year they removed the automatic flash day shipping from Rouge, which is fine because it never happened anyway. And now you have to pay an additional 10 or 15 bucks or something every year to get flash day shipping. Here's the gag though, it still don't work. There are threads upon threads of people complaining about how Sephora flash two day shipping is an absolute scam. No one is getting their shit in two days. And Sephora was smart enough to put in the fine print that it is a non-refundable thing if you actually sign up for this and pay the 10 or 15 bucks. So if you're in the mood to just straight up give Sephora $15 for nothing, then their flash shipping might be for you. But otherwise, I'd stay away. The next thing that brands do that I absolutely cannot stand is trying to sell us kids makeup. This is something I tend to see the most this time of year when they give us these gigantic palettes that come with their own like built-in caboodles. And it's just drawers and drawers and layers of every eyeshadow you could ever possibly think of, but also lipsticks and face powders and blushes and everything all in one. I hate it! Whenever these palettes come out, I hear some people try to say, oh, maybe it's good if you're a makeup artist starting out because you get so much product for a fairly reasonable price. But let me tell you something. I have been on, I don't even know, I can't even count anymore how many shoots, and I have never, and I mean never, walked into hair and makeup and seen the artist on set with one of those. And this is definitely wrong of me, but if a makeup artist did show up with some of this Polly Pocket built ass makeup, I would definitely be side eyeing. I don't know any makeup lover who actually enjoys these things. These are definitely something that I imagine might be fine to give to a teenager who's just getting into makeup. Again, kids makeup. But the fact that places like Sephora are selling it and not just, you know, Target or Walmart or something indicates to me that they do expect adults to be buying this. I don't know, I don't get it. I find it incredibly uninspiring to see a bunch of different types of makeup all jumbled together in one plastic train case type of deal. Plus, and maybe this is just me, I despise having lip products or lip palettes built into the same palette as my eyeshadow or face palette or whatever. I, I don't like it, I don't like it, I don't like it. The next thing brands do that I can't stand is blaming leaks. Like, oh, these photos of our palette leaked so we had to release it early. People were saying that this is why those ABH Norvina Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3, people were saying that's why those came out so quickly, they were leaked. Problem with that is, that makes no sense. Photos of your palette leaking does not create a sudden urgency to release it ahead of schedule. Why does it matter? It's not like if a song leaks, like if the song leaks and people have heard the song, it's over Johnny. But if pictures of a palette leak, then people can see what the colors are in it, but that's it. And who gives a who gives a now they know what it kind of looks like, kind of sort of, depending on how accurate the photo even is. There's just no logical connection to me as to why a brand would be forced to release ahead of their intended schedule because people got a look at their palette earlier than they had planned. And frankly, it sounds like bullshit. Next thing I hate, and this is quite timely now that we are officially in the holiday season, I suppose, is putting the same in every holiday collection year after year after year, or every collection in general, honestly, where brands just repackage and repromote the same products ad nauseum. How many NARS face palettes do we need with Orgasm and Laguna? And how many gift sets and holiday kits have we seen with the Too Faced Mini Better Than Sex Mascara? We're tired, we're tired of it. Not that I'm buying Too Faced anything ever anyway, but you take my point. Another thing I hate is when brands ignore anyone who isn't white. Picking on one of my favorite brands again to give an example, but Hourglass with this ghost palette. I've said before, if you don't have the complexion of an actual ghost, 
this palette will probably be too light for you. Come on, Hourglass, I thought we were woker than this in 2019. Release two versions, one for light, medium, and one for medium deep. Or if you're only going to release one version of a face palette, don't make it such an obvious f*** you to your melanated customers. Last but not least is I hate it when brands just spam us when they spam us with collection after collection, release after release. Once upon a time, the brand most guilty of this was Mac when they were releasing like three or four collections a month. In the years since, Mac has seemed to calm their t but I feel like the damage might have been done because people do not check for Mac anymore the way they used to in OG YouTube days. Now it seems that the over-releasing throne is being held down by ColourPop because girl! With ABH coming for that ass, by the way, because they've come out with something like eight palettes in the last four months. Brands spamming us with collections and releases tends to happen regardless during the holiday season, but the brands that do it year round, I find get less and less of my attention and easily less and less of my dollars. The inundation of new, new, new just makes me want to ignore them entirely and makes me not want anything. Including and especially when these are collabs that no one, and I mean no one, asked for or wanted. I'm looking at you, Two-Faced and Madonna. Anyway, those are just some of the things that brands do that really drive me up the wall. This was really fun to do. I love that tag videos seem to be having a little bit of a resurgence because they remind me of old school YouTube in the best way. Because let's face it, there are some things better left behind like crappy audio and video quality. But tag videos are really fun. I'm excited to see them making a bit of a comeback. In fact, Kelsey Brianna J, AKA Kelsey Brianna Bay, AKA Kelsey Brianna Slay recently created a tag of her own called the Glow Up in Beauty tag, I believe. So if there's interest in me doing that, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll do that as a Patreon exclusive. Patreon fam, let me know what you think. And I will of course link her video below where she does the tag so you can see what the questions are and stuff in case you missed it. Anyway, it's a wrap for your girl T on this fine Thursday. So I'm gonna get out of here and well, start editing this video actually. But thank you so much for hanging out with me all the way to the end. And I will leave you with one reminder before I go. Never trust anyone with a Morphe code. Just don't do it. Bye-bye. That's, that's a nappy-headed hose there. I'm gonna take that down. <laughs>